Hi everybody, it's Paula here from Craftables today and thank you for joining me. This is a Christmas card that we did um, with us last week in our classes. Um, it's a, it got a bit of an acetate swing in the middle of it there. So that one there just swings freely. And then it gives you this inside look as well. So you could do your writing there if you wanted to. And we are going to use some of the puffy paint and some glitter and some embossing stuff. So there's a lot, lots of little things going on. Okay, so to start off with, I've got a piece of white cardstock that measures four and a half by eleven and three quarters, and then I have gone ahead and I've scored at five and three quarters and six. So that will give you a little spine there, just so that when we put the acetate on, it's got a little bit of swinging room. In the middle there okay all right so that's our card base so what I've done done is I have cut out a piece of cardstock so the papers I'm using today are the uniquely creative once upon a Christmas so I've cut this piece of cardstock here to measure four and three eighths by five and five eighths so it's just a little bit smaller than the front of my paper there so I'm going to adhere that down now I have put a cross in the middle just so that when I cut my middle piece out of this it's not going to start um, pulling up around where I've cut out the rectangle in the middle. Okay, so this piece just goes right in the centre of your card front there. Alright, so now what we need to do is we need to cut out that window in the front, front there. So if you've bought my kit you'll have a template in there. If you haven't got this kit or um, a three and a quarter by four and a quarter, sorry, three, two and three quarters by four and a quarter die template to cut out, then just use a template that I've cut to that size. I'm going to pop it onto there and I'm going to draw around it with my pencil. So if you have a die this size, go ahead and use the die. Much quicker and easier, but if you don't, you can still cut out this aperture in the middle here. Alright, so I've just drawn around my my template there. And I'm just going to grab my craft knife. And I'm just going to cut out the inside of that template that I've just done there. So I prefer to just go freehand, but use a um, steel ruler if you feel more comfortable doing that. And we do have to get through about two thickish layers here, so you will need to push fairly hard down on there. Let's see if I've gone through. There and I haven't quite cut through on that corner there, so I'm just going to go back and do that. There we go. Alright, so there's the little window cut out in the middle. And now I'm just going to go ahead and do the acetate. Now the acetate I've cut down to 4.5 by 5.5. And, and then I've placed the long side, so the 5.5 inch side, along the top of my trimmer or my scoreboard. And I've come in half an inch and I've scored down there. So... It's a bit hard to see, but there is a score line of half an inch there. Okay, so I'm just going to fold that inch, that sorry, that score line backwards and forwards just so it gives it a bit of movement. So it, because acetate is a bit harder, it's not so free moving. So pulling that backwards and forwards and scoring on the score line a few times gives it a bit of extra swing, a bit of subtlety there. All right, now I have popped this through a die. So this one. Let's see if we can see it better there. So this um, embossing folder I've put through is actually a snowflake one. So I've got little bits of snowflake on there. But you could do anything you like. Um, I just wanted to keep it pretty simple so that you could see what was going on behind the little trees and everything there. And it wasn't just sort of taking up too much of my room on my card. Alright, so now this now will go on the inside of our card so I'm going to put a little bit of tape along there and I'm just going to stick it to the first score line on the inside of my card there so we are going to cover over this this little tab here so don't be too worried if you can see through the acetate and see your double-sided tape there 
So as you can see on the inside here, we've got two score lines. So we've got one there and one there. So I'm going to go. I'm going to adhere the score edge of my acetate with the first score line on my card. Yeah, it is going to be smaller than the card, but that's exactly what we want because we don't want when we've got it sitting out like this, we don't want it hitting against the table. So that's exactly what we want it to look like. All right, so now the other piece I've got cut out here is another piece of pattern paper. This one measures four and three eighths by five and five eighths, and that one's just going to go on the very back there. So you could do your writing, or whatever you wanted on there. If you don't want to see the writing through the acetate and through the front of the card, just turn it over to the back, and we can do the writing on the back. Easy. So that one's going to cover over the acetate fold there, and we're going to have that nice little image in the middle there. So we have this one here. We now have our acetate and our window. So basically all it is now is decorating. So I've gone and cut out some little bits and pieces here. And I'm going to stick those down now. So I'm just going to put a bit of tape on behind my little houses here. Now if you were really clever, you could put a little bit of a light up behind here to make the windows light up a little bit if you wanted to, which would look amazing. You would have to be very careful how you did it though so you didn't see your wiring. So that one's just going to go there, and I've got a little Christmas tree I'm going to put in between the two, like that. So I'm actually going to pop him up on foam tape, just so he sort of sits forward from the flowers, uh, sorry, from the houses a little bit. There we go. Alright, so I've got a tiny little, little star here as well, which I'll pop up on foam, foam tape as well, and I'll stick that just above the tree. So just a tiny little bit of foam for my star. That sticks down, there we go. And I'm just going to put that above my tree there. Awesome! Okay, so I now have a little few little flowers that I wanted to pop down here. So I'm going to stick that one down there. I'm just going to use a bit of glue just for the sake of being a bit quicker. So that one's going to go... Whoops. That one's going to go there, and then I'm going to pop another one under there, going up the side a little bit. There. Let's just be careful not to glue anything onto your acetate there, just so that it doesn't get stuck in the wrong place. And a little red one here, just tucking it under a bit. And I have this little teeny weeny one, I'm just going to glue that under there a little bit. Alright, so those are the flowers done. So I did have a little piece of holly that I wanted to pop at the top here, so I'm just going to glue that on as well. So a little piece of holly over the top there. And I do have a Merry Christmas down the bottom. So this is just one of the Peel Craft Merry Christmases. And I usually like to use a pokey tool or a craft knife to get these off because they are very, very little and fiddly. So I'm just going to put that right there. Just fuss around with it a bit till you get it in the right place. Okay. Alright, so there's my Mary, and I'm just going to get my Christmas off there now. Now sometimes these do pull out of shape a little bit when you pull them off, but they do go back into shape if you're very careful when you put it back on your card there. There we go. So there is my Merry Christmas along the bottom. Alright, so basically the last step we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of that puffy foam there so that we can have a little bit of snow along the top. So what I've got is, um, what I use is the liquid applique, and this is it here. So it is an, it's, a, it's an old type of product, but it's the same sort of thing as puffy paint. Now I have cut it right, right down. So it normally comes with quite a, a short, uh, quite a pointy nozzle on there so you can get little, little bits. But because I wanted to do a big area, I have cut it right down so that, I can't see very 
there we go so the ins so the gap for the puffy paint to come out is a lot bigger so i'm just going to poke around in there and make sure that, that it's all coming out okay Okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze it quite hard and I'm going to dot it up and down until I get my look of snow along there. So just like that. So I'm just going to pop it down and finish along there. Now when you come to heat this with a heat gun, now it does, um, it does actually puff up overnight, but the puff up with the that you get from the heat gun is much much better so if you have a heat, heat gun go ahead and use that which i will show you how to do in a moment um, but if you don't have a heat gun just you could either put it over the toaster a little bit just make sure you don't um, burn it <laughs> or you can just leave it overnight and let it puff up on its own but it doesn't puff up all that great on its own but it, it will do it it's just not the best the best way so I'm just going to go ahead here. Now I know it looks very dirty and a little bit creamy and muddy looking. But when we heat it up with the heat gun it will go a bit more white. Okay so I'm just dotting that on there. Okay. So there's my snow on there. doesn't look great at the moment. But I am going to bring a heat gun in. And when I heat it up it's going to go nice and puffy. Now because we have some acetate here. In the middle if I put the heat gun straight down on top of that the acetate is going to buckle and go horrible so I'm going to pull the acetate and everything else to the back so that there's no there's no way that it can get buckled from the heat so I'm just gonna be a wee bit noisy with the heat gun and then you'll see it puff up as we go There we go, so it's all nice and puffed up and fluffy looking, so it looks really good with that. So I wanted to just give it a bit more of a sparkle on there, so I've just got a little bit of glitter that I'm going to dot on as well. And all I did was, when it's finished um, drying off a little bit, I just went ahead and did some like little random dots of glitter all through that snow there. And then I'm just going to sprinkle the glitter on and whatever catches, catches. And if it doesn't, that's great, doesn't matter. So just little bits of glue on there like that. So I'm just going to sprinkle over some of my glitter now. So it just gives it a bit of a sparkle for Christmas. There we go. And I just tap off the rest. And it's not coming up on the camera very well, but there is a bit of a sparkle there. There we go. And because the, the glue will dry clear, it'll just look like a sparkle on top of your snow. Now, I haven't got my candy glitz with me right now, but what I have also done on this one is, if you look very carefully, I have put candy glitz on all the little dots that are raised from my embossing folder, and that just gives it a bit more of a sparkle to it, and it just adds a bit more glitter and Christmas to it. So that's our card for today. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you give it a try too. It's actually a very fun, easy one to do. Any of the um, Once Upon a Time papers are really good. So all of these are from the Once Upon a Time papers from Uniquely Creative. And they have beautiful cut-apart sheets. Whoopsie daisy. Which is all this stuff has come from there. And they have a lot more stuff on there as well. Awesome. So thank you so much for joining me, everybody. And I hope you have a lovely day. And I have one more video before the end of the year 
coming up next week and we'll be doing a little box for that one so i hope you can join me for that one next weekend thanks everyone bye